Welcome back to Sons of the Shoe. Nick and Spencer with you. And we are going to get to the playoff rankings here in a few moments. Ohio State did not play this weekend, and yet they fell in the rankings, which I find to be approximately horseshit. <laughs> I, I should not I should not have started the segment with that. Cursing's bad, kids. Don't do it. But, uh, Cooper Patanga. Poor These Patanga. rankings are horseshit. Yeah. <laughs> I did not want salmon. I said it four times. I did not want to play Mizzou. I said it four times. And now we're going to have to see Eli Drinkwitz nerd butt all over there. <laughs> did you, did, by the way, did you see his uh, his hit on ESPN after they, like, when they were interviewing people about, like, their bowls and all that? And he, he picked on. up his phone and he was like, oh, uh, hold on, guys. I got to take this call from Connor Stallions. He's, he's got some uh, Ohio State signs for me to share. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now, Eli Drinkwitz wears special Mormon underwear. He's not even Mormon, <laughs> but he just likes the idea. Now, I did want to get to uh, Cooper Patanga or Cooper Patagna. I don't know which one it is, but he is a recruiting analyst for 27, uh, 24-7 Sports. And he was reacting to the uh, Kyle McCord news today. And he said, firm, and this is his Twitter at CPatagna247, saying, firmly expect Buckeyes to be in the buyer's market at quarterback, which you and I both agree is going to be expensive. But he said, keep an eye on Cam Ward and Dante Moore. Now, I'm going to tell you right now if you told me Cam Ward was the starting quarterback for the Buckeyes next year, that dovetails perfectly into one year of Cam Ward, then you get Air Nolan. And I would say, like, I would expect the Buckeyes. To have to beat Michigan next year, and I expect them to be in the playoffs with Cam Moore. And I'm talking about being like a top four seed, getting the buy and everything. But if you told me they got Dante Moore, I'll be honest with you, dude. I think they should be in the playoffs the next two or three years. To me, this is Dante Moore coming out of UCLA, transferring back home, whether it's Michigan State or Ohio State. I think has a real chance to 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 significantly disrupt the Big Ten. And maybe getting Dante would make you lose Air Noland. But I think, listen, not only is this kid a, a dual-threat quarterback who's got a hell of an arm and is incredibly electric on the ground, he also is, uh, is a Detroit kid. Yeah. The recruitment with uh, Michigan ended very poorly, from what I've heard. My uh, my source is Keith Britton of 92 through the fan fame, <laughs> aka the assassin. But he he doesn't think Michigan would go back to try and get Dante Moore. So it's equal parts. You get a kid that I think has the upside to win national titles with starting next year and year two in college football after an up and down year at UCLA. And man, you want to talk about striking back in the Michigan rivalry? This would. Yes, yeah. all some Michigan fans. Well, hey, you'd instantly flip all the like, like this past year. What did we hear? The every every coming back from commercial. Oh, JJ McCarthy from Gus yep. JJ McCarthy, the Ohio State fan playing yep. for the Michigan Wolf. It, that was the whole thing. It, it was all that Ohio State missed out on this kid, and now he's beating up on you against your in your with your in your for your biggest rival. Like it would kind of be flipping the script in that way. I do love that idea. I, I I think the only thing that makes me a little bit nervous is the fact that we do have some tape on Dante Moore that isn't pretty from UCLA. A lot of pick sixes in there, way more interceptions than touchdowns. But I think what's interesting is he kind of took a shot. Uh, uh, like he was interviewed about his, his transferring and his kind of parting shot at UCLA was that he wants to go somewhere where he feels like he can really develop as a quarterback. And so I think that kind of speaks more to he didn't feel like he was in a place that was really working with him to make him a, a better quarterback and get him to that next level. And what did we just talk about that entire last segment with Ryan Day? That's supposed to be his bread and butter. His bread and butter is supposed to be developing quarterbacks and getting them to the NFL. His track record says he did it with Justin Fields. He did it with Dwayne Haskins, rest in peace. He did it with C.J. Stroud. So he should be able to do it again with a guy that's this that's still raw but that has a boatload of talent. I mean, he is the biggest, he is the highest rated recruit in UCLA history. And I don't know what that means for like where he'd fit in Ohio state history. Cause Ohio state probably has a better, better recruits than, um, than uh, UCLA has ever had um, overall. But at the same time, like that, that's pretty telling. It, it would be awesome from a story narrative standpoint with it being a kid from the Michigan and from Detroit. Um, but beyond that, like, I think there's a lot of raw talent there to tap into. So I like either of those guys. 
I kind of lead Cam Ward just because I feel like you kind of know a little bit more of what you're getting. But if I'm going to sit here and say that I trust Ryan Day to get the most out of these these prospects and these players, then the idea of Cam Ward is dev, or sorry, the idea of Dante Moore rather is super super exciting to me. So I'm I'm right there with you. I like either of those. What I think is interesting is I think Dante Moore uh, is going to bring maybe certain kids along, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, some of the younger kids out there that might be in the portal that either played with him in like the All American game or other kids. Um, you mentioned Brandon Innish was was uh, you know uh, tweeted about playing in that game with him, and then I think Cam Ward. I think Cam Ward does the same thing, almost like with a bunch of the older guys saying, "Hey." That dude was dynamite at Washington State, and he didn't have the kind of talent that he would have uh, going to to Ohio State. Maybe we should try and chase a ring with him. So I I think it's interesting. There are two very distinctly different paths, though, because yeah. of the collateral damage of bringing in a kid with you know three years, four years left of eligibility, and bringing in a guy with one. But man, I got to tell you, if either one of those guys ends up your quarterback, I think you're in the playoffs next year. Oh and, but, yeah, and that, which now feels like a you're not saying anything, yeah. but like, I, I think I'm really excited at the idea they could land either. Now, if they, what if they, they land, um, I was trying to think who's in there. Hank Bachmeyer. Eh, it's not going to move as much. <laughs> All right. If they land, um, Dylan Gabriel's pretty darn good. I was trying to think of the other kid that I saw on the portal that I was like, ah, eh, that wouldn't really do a lot for me, but m- maybe even DJ you, I'd probably say there's a ceiling to what you can do, but Kim Warden and Dante Moore are significant. Now, we ben have Finley from Cal doesn't do it for you. Oh, wait, let me get my nipple clamps. Um, <laughs> let's let's get to the playoff rankings. It was announced <laughs> last night, and I, I love how the whole playoffs, like leading up to it, you go you know 25 all the way to 10, and then from you know, or sorry, to 11, then 10 to, to six, and then you do you know five, four, whatever. Oh, they, last they, night, they they got me, they got yeah. me because I was on the air at 92 3 yesterday for the pregame show for the Browns. And we were kind of watching that in real time. And they gave me the first three. And then they threw the next one up there. And it was Georgia. And we didn't have the sound on. So we were all like in the studio like, oh, they kept Georgia in. And then it moved down to the six hole. And I was like, oh, never yep. mind. They got us yeah. on that one. <laughs> they broke, broke our ankles like Iverson. So one is Michigan. Two is Washington. Three is Texas. Four is Bama. And the first two out are Florida State and Georgia. May I, may I submit here? Washington should be the number one team in the nation. This is and and Washington has been disrespected all season long with where they've been placed. They were they were disrespected th- on Friday. How was yes. that spread nine and a half yep. in favor of Oregon? I understand that they maybe thought Oregon was playing better football at that point in the year and all, and, and they've gotten better as the season went on. I understand that, but nine and a half points to a team that already beat you this season, like maybe three and a half. I can understand yep. nine and a half. Are you yep. kidding me? And they responded the way they did all year, yeah. which is they went out and they got the dub. And so I, th- I think Washington should have been number one. I, th- I, I, I think maybe they dodged a bullet because I'd rather play Texas round one than I'd, I'd rather play Alabama. True. But like, I-, I do think that was a little bit disrespectful. And I, like, I get it. The Pac-12 is going away. I get it. The Pac-12 for the last decade has been skunk butt. This year, the Pac-12 Nick, was legit. I saw people who were saying that if the goal is to put the best four teams in, Washington should be out because they played in the Pac-12. And I was like, do you even know anything about college football? Are you are you shitting me? The Pac-12 was maybe the best conference. Like, there's a case to be made that it was the best conference in football this season because yep. of the gauntlet of quarterbacks that you had out there. The teams you had to – like, you, are we forgetting that UC, USC had a bad year? Yes, overall from a record standpoint. But it was still Caleb Williams who was quarterbacking that team. Like, that was no easy game to win for both Oregon and Washington. And then you had Oregon and Washington head-to-head with each other. You had some other good – I mean, we just talked about Cam Ward being a transfer portal quarterback that puts you in the playoff picture if you're Ohio State. Like, you have him out there in the in the Pac-12. That, that Pac-12 was an absolute gauntlet this year. And so I can see where your argument is of putting him at one. But the idea that they should have left them out because – they weren't one of the best four teams in the country, even though they're undefeated, was preposterous to me. And, and I'll be clear, too, before we get into the action, what it, what it was and whether or not they got it right, to me, my mindset with the playoffs since it was four teams has always been you have to put the best four teams in. I understand that it's not fair and it's it's not the who earned it type of thing, and I understand there, there's, some, there's, some give, there's some give and take with that because 
they've never two lost team in. And that kind of speaks to if you are a two loss team, we can't truly say that you're one of the best teams in the country when we have all these other one loss teams to choose from. So I get that. That's never been an issue to me. So even in a year where like last year, Bama had two losses and there's people still saying like, well, Bama should get in over Ohio state. They're still a better team than them. All these different things. Okay. You still have to earn it to an extent, but of the teams that were in your, in your purview that were a deserving and were the best in the country, to me, it had to be Michigan, Washington, Georgia, and Alabama. Georgia hasn't lost a game in three years until this weekend. And you're telling me that you think because they lost by three points to Bama that they should drop all the way to six and be left out of the playoff? Like, I, listen, I, I I understand the the argument for Texas. I understand they have the head-to-head against Bama. And that's why my, what I said they should do and what they ended up doing was – what I figured was going to happen because they had Bam and Texas tied to each other. Bam and mm-hmm. Texas were never, like, they were stuck with each other in an arranged marriage almost, no matter what happened this weekend. It was, they were all going to be dependent on what each other did. And so I understand why they did it that way. And I understand like you're leaving out, a, you'd be leaving out two conference champions. And so it was easier to just say, okay, well, we got to leave out Georgia because they didn't win the one game they needed to win to get in. But if you're going best four, I think Georgia and Bama should have been in truly. Yeah, I mean, I, I disagree. I don't think this is a year that the SEC deserved two teams in the, the college football playoff. I thought it was that it was Alabama and Georgia and then a bunch of other teams. So I think those two teams beat up on a lot of crappy football teams. So um I listen, I it's 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 twelve and one versus twelve and one versus twelve and one. I think Georgia and Alabama being in was a good thing. I with Quinn Ewers playing. I don't think the fall is that much. If Quinn Ewers had not been healthy, I probably would agree with you. Right? I would use the the Florida State of this. Yeah. But I think I think once you get into it, Texas does have an ass load of talent. And now the question becomes, you know, would they have been a better matchup against Michigan? Would they have been a better, better matchup against Washington? I, I think if we, we could find a weak team, we probably would say Texas. But let's be honest. The only reason we're thinking Georgia should be in, probably not the only reason. One of the biggest reasons is they won the national title last year. And I think I think we're all guilty of that sometimes. Ohio State's been gifted things because, well, but they were just in the playoffs last year. Like I I think they got it right. I think they got the four teams. And I think they I think they walked the best balance of we got to get the four best teams and we got to get the four teams that are most deserving. And I think this whole thing with Florida state is all crocodile tears. And it's funny how like Booger McFarland acting like he was so outraged by the whole thing. I mean, I I thought he just doesn't have a take. The take is, well, it's not fair guys. Let's cut the shit. It's not meant to be fair. (laughs) The whole thing, if it was fair, the group of five team that goes undefeated would be left in. But the reality is the only reason that Florida State's candidacy looks anywhere near any of these other teams is because they ended up winning the ACC title. So that enhances their strength of record. But that, like, I got to be honest with you guys, head-to-head and conference titles matter until they don't. And I'll be honest with you, even if Jordan Travis was healthy, I don't think Florida State is on the level of the five teams around them. I don't even think Florida State's on the level of Ohio State or Oregon a one loss and a two loss team. So I think they happen to just beat up on a crappy conference in football this year. And so all due respect to Florida. I like, I like Mike Norvell after the game. Oh, it's a travesty. This is disrespectful. Grow the hell up. Like guys, I get it, man. Like in a perfect world, Florida state would be in and they'd have a chance to prove themselves. The perfect world is next year. So the idea of, then guys, it's college football playoffs. It's we're not sending these kids off to war. Okay. The first four teams don't get passes or deferences, and everybody else has got to go serve in the army. So they're they all the like, yep, they played hard, they played their butt off, they did everything they could, and in the end, everything they could wasn't enough. That's called yeah. being an adult. That's called living in the real world. And the idea that the college football playoff selection committee has to come out and well hey we don't want to hurt any feelings we just want to be fair that's not their job their job is not to get it fair their job is to get it as right as they possibly can and i think as much as they could i think that actually happened this year 
Real quick, because you brought up Mike Norvell, I wanted to say I thought Steve Sarkeesian. I, I really like Steve Sarkeesian. I know he's had some tor- turmoil in his career as a as a coach and some different things that haven't worked out for him. Um, but he he I I really like him. And I thought after the game, he made a comment about like, "Hey man," he basically said what you just said. He was like, "I think we put enough out there to show that we deserve it." But listen, like it's in their hands, and we'll you know we'll respect whatever decision is made. Now that you could argue that was just like him saying the right thing in the moment. He was in a good mood because his team just won a big game and all these different things. But at the same time, like I, I hope that that's the mentality that other coaches would have. And I get where Mike, Mike Norvell, listen, ultimately Mike Norvell has, has an argument to be upset. Like it's, it's as much as we can say they didn't deserve to be in. If you're a Florida state fan, if you're on that team, you feel bad for the kids, Mike Norvell, like, they have they, they they're allowed to be outraged and be mad. They're the they're like the main people who are allowed to be outraged and mad because they did everything they should, they could have done to try to get in and they were left out. So I I get well, that. I'm not going to knock them for it. But at the quick, same time, they are quick. the team that shouldn't be in. Uh, go can ahead. I, I got something. Can else I tell you about this? Sorry to interrupt you, buddy. Because no, 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 I just good. I feel really passionate about this. How we accept defeat and how we accept um how we accept things like this absolutely matter. You know what I mean? Like I and, and listen, I'm I'm gonna correlate to parenting. I'm at the stage where I got 13 year old and and two nine year olds at home, and I'm constantly trying to work with them on perspective when things don't go your way. Because like, what kind of message are you sending? And like, I I empathize with Mike Norvell's outrage. I do, but like, there is something to be said about being gracious about this and about being able to say, "Hey, man." We thought we had what it took to be in. The selection committee disagreed. I want to thank them for considering us. I want to wish the four teams going to the playoffs the, the, the best luck. And we're going to focus on ourselves. Because every dude in that portal saw, hey, when you don't get it your way, throw a big pissy fit because that's what how it works in college football. And I just think like there's not enough people willing to be gracious in defeat. And it sucks. All right. I, I have had enough crap kicked up into my face that I've eaten enough poop sandwiches in my life that I can tell you nobody likes the way they taste, but how you handle it matters. Florida state is not a victim here. There is no victim. It's a made up thing. And the idea is guys, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, Florida state wouldn't have even been in the conversation for the national title game. And now you were on the cusp. And did you get a bad break? And that's ultimately, listen, Florida State's 13-0 and with Jordan Travis. They're in, and maybe Bama or Texas is out. 100% fair. Yeah. It's not what happened. Yeah. So, like, I'm I, sorry. Like, I, I'm not it, telling you to eat a poop sandwich and like it, but I am saying <laughs> this is a teachable moment, man. Yeah. Like, these things happen in real life, and you can either piss and moan, you can bitch and moan, you can stomp your feet around, or you can teach your guys – Hey guys, this is the cost of doing business, and next year we'd be in, and we just have to be okay with that. Yeah, I think. Um, well, two things here because I have a larger point I want to get to that involves the the Florida State conversation, but I, I can't push back on anything you said from the parenting standpoint because obviously with a young child myself, like I go through the same thing, and it's, it's the exact same thing, Nick, that I say when people act outrage over like I don't I don't want to get like too too political here necessarily, but like when certain decisions are made or in, in government or an election result or something like that. And it's like, guys, like, oh, you know, here's a better example. In sports, when athletes do things that are, like, bad, like, they get, like, you know, the Deshaun Watson situation, for example. Like, oh, how do I explain to my kid that uh, that they have this quarter? You just, you just talk to him. Like, yep. you talk to him like a human and you explain to them, like, what this guy did wasn't a good thing. And, and you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't condone this. And it's not, and if you're somebody who swears off the Browns because of that, and there's certainly people in the fan base who have done that, then I understand that. Like, I respect you for that. Like, that's that's your choice. Like, I I I can't blame you. But like, you just it's it's about having conversations. And sometimes I think parents, to your point, are too easy or too quick to just let other people raise their kids. They they want like their idols and their icons and the the leaders in politics and sports and all these other platforms to be the ones who raise their kids. And it's like, no, that, that's on you. And so to take that analogy to what you're saying with these kids and these, these, these college athletes at this level who they did everything they could and they missed out. Like you're right. You just, it's a teachable moment. You got to kind of say like, sometimes this is how life goes. 
and you keep it moving. And this is my larger point on this. I think that as college football fans, and I'm not saying you and me, but I think college football fans are guilty of contradicting themselves and talking out of both sides of their mouths. Because for every every time that we sit there and we say, well, we love a four-team playoff, or we love the BCS days because every game of the regular season was just that much more meaningful and it was so much more ramped up and there was so much more meaning behind it when a team takes a loss in the regular, all these different things. But then look what happened yesterday, Nick. Look what happened yesterday. It was outrage central on social media and watching ESPN live at, at, at your house with your family. Like people were pissed off because, well, this team should have got in and that team should have got in and the committee got it wrong. And this is the most disrespectful uh, version of this thing that we've ever done. And how, how dare they not pick the best four teams or the most deserving four teams. And Oh my goodness, let's burn down the entire structure and start all over and rebuild college football from clay. Like what do we, this is why it's going to 12. And so all the people bitching and moaning about, oh, well, this is going to ruin college football. Well, guess what? You are the same people who were sitting there yesterday acting like somebody had just knocked you over, pissed on you, and then, I don't know, tried to cut your arm off while you're on the ground. And <laughs> I didn't really know where I, I, I was going somewhere. And then it just you had two it, things. It fell, so it wasn't it the third flat. thing. I needed the figured. third thing and it fell flat. But like, <laughs> you, you get what I'm saying. Like you, you act like somebody just pushed you over, kicked you and then pissed on you and then walked away. And you're so outraged by the idea that this team got left out or that team got left out. Well, guess what? Next year, it's going to be completely more – it's going to be fair because all the teams that deserve to get in are going to get in. Maybe some that don't deserve to get in will get in, but that should flush itself out in a, in a 12-team playoff. That includes the better teams in it that will probably beat those teams. So I think that – it, and, and here's the other thing. All these people talking about, well, what precedent does this set? Who gives a fuck about precedent? When the, when, the, when the system is changing next year, all the precedents that they set in the past years – None of that even matters anymore. Like none of that mattered for this year. None of that matters for next year. It truly is starting from a clean slate of precedents when you have a 12 team playoff a year, a year ahead. So I, I'm not buying into any of that. I think that we do this to ourselves. We, we, we can't on one, on one hand say that we're, we're, we love college football because every game matters. And then on the other hand say, well, they don't ever get it right. So what the hell are we doing here? It doesn't add up to me. So I, I think this is probably the best year for it to end on at being a four team system, because now we know none of this debate will really get in our way moving forward into a 12 team playoff. I just think there's a lot of outrage in it. You could almost plan it to a T not there. Honestly, guys, if Florida state had been in and Alabama was out, there would have been outrage. If Florida state had been in and Texas had been out, right. There would have been outrage. If Washington was ahead of Michigan, there would have been like there. That's just the reality of, the, the machine, the whole point of it is to generate interest and people can't just go, oh yeah, they did the right thing or they got it as right as they possibly could have. Yeah. Like this year, guys, there were seven teams and yes, I include Ohio State in that. There were seven teams that were really friggin' good. Honestly, I throw Oregon in there. There were eight teams. This would have been a hell of a year for a college football playoff with 12 teams. They didn't have it. And so this idea, this I just get really, really I just it just feels gross that people are taking what's happened and blow it up into something ridiculous. So we're gonna continue on. What do you think they got right? What do you think they got wrong in the playoffs there, guys? But I want to ask a question, and I think it's a fair question. Could there be another reason Kyle McCord entered the portal? That's next. Sons of the shoe with Nick and Spencer. 